Welcome, this is Melinda Barlow, CZT, Certified Zentangle Teacher, and another lesson, and today's lesson is Columbine, and I've done Columbine before, and this is the Tango Columbine, but I'm doing it in my um, Tango book, so there's the book, Tango Relax and Ponder, and we're doing this page, they don't have to be done in any order, it's just kind of fun, but we're doing this tangle, and you can do it on anything. You don't have to have the book to do it, but this is just a fun thing to have and and a way to um, be able to to do some tangles when you're not sure what you want to do, and it just gives you some ideas. And we're going to do this little flower because um, it's just it's just a beautiful little flower, and then I'm going to fill in this. Um, truthful with color also so we're just going to do the flower down in here and I'm just going to take my 01 micron 01 and we're just going to start by drawing some random circles and this way you you're not going to I mean it, it's just going to give you some uh, more of this little pattern but it's just totally random. So I'm just going to put some random circles down. And that's going to be my start. And then I'm going to do each little flower and build on that. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put six petals around one of these. So I'm going to focus in. I'm going to come in so you can see this a little closer. Oh, and I forgot to tell you that this is um, Teresa Long is the author of this uh, tangle and but now we're just going to put five petals and the way I get five petals is I will start one here and then I'm going to put here and here so it kind of looks like a um, a little blade on if I I don't know what it looks like but if I do that Y shape upside down Y and then I put this one in between I get the five petals if I just try to go around I don't have it the five petals all that well done and now we're going to aura so how the petals turn out really doesn't matter much because we're going to aura And I like to turn my book or turn my tile when I to make it in the most comfortable position for me. So I'm turning it. And I could go ahead and do all of these, but I found that it's better if you do one and then completely and then go back and pick up the others. Otherwise you have them kind of overlapping a little strange. So now we're going to come and we're going to do this shape of a, uh, a petal. We're going to go from the center and then to the center of the next one. And I rotate because it's, it's much easier for me to do that design if I rotate. And you can see they're not, it's not exactly center on that, um, but in the mid of it. And now I've got another one that's kind of underneath and that's what's going to give you a that look of it being underneath. And we'll come back and draw, um, embellish this a little bit more, but we're gonna draw this one so you can see why that so I'm going to do my petals. And you can see how this flower is now going to look like it's underneath the one prior. And then I'm aura in all of those. And now I've got my words, Mark Twain, I, that's the author, but I'm going to go ahead and just do my 
flower right over the top of my word mark and it's going to go under so I've got to rotate around and then I have to kind of think where is this coming from and put my last one in so now it looks like this one is underneath those that are there before so we're going to go ahead and do I'm just going to go ahead and and do the other columbines so that you can see how I'm going to scan out so I what happens when I get in is I get off camera when I focus in real close I get off camera so I'm going to do this one so I did the petals and then I did my aura and now I'm coming back and I'm putting my other outside petals on rotating my book so I can kind of see about where I need to you know how I need to put them and this one's going to be under that one that I drew there so that it it over uh, it underlaps <laughs> so it looks like this one is drawn over the top of so you can see now to do the embellishment I'm going to come and I'm going to enhance this I'm just going to do my um, just go over it with my pen and thicken up that line and then I'm going to draw my little strokes in between the petals and if I give them a little curve the petals will look more realistic they'll have a little rounded look so you can see that I've given it a little rounded the you know just that little leaf in there I'm going to go ahead and draw these and then we're going to come back and color this and um, and add some other embellishments So there we have all of them drawn and I, I want to match it up so I'm going to go ahead and add some um, little orbs in here just so that, that it blends. Sometimes it's hard to tell, it was that a petal or is that room for an orb? Because right there that would be a petal. And then I could go ahead and put my dots around the outside edge to kind of blend everything together and you can see that I've added I have some um, Springer in here so I'm going to add a Springer over here and it's just a mooka with some little caps and then this kind of filled in so that it kind of looks like it um, has a hollow spot so we'll do another one. I'm going to holly bot underneath and then do my little and then put my caps on and fill in right under there so that I have consistency on both ends of my of my pattern because it was mine to begin with so I, I kind of want to keep it that way and there's some lines that are running through but they're going to disappear as um, as we tangle uh, you can see I've also got some fescue I love fescue I put that in almost everything especially if it's organic I will put a little fescue in and everyone does their fescue a little differently and so you just will learn to do yours however you like it and I can come back even after I color to kind of continue that little dot so we're going to to color this so it does blend in looks to me like I need to make these just a little darker 
so that they fit in with this. But what I see is that these have a little graphite right here in the center. So if I pick up my graphite pencil and put a little graphite there, that's going to help those blend in also so that it blends in and matches up. Because my goal is to match up what I did here to what I did there. So now we're going to color. And lately, lots of the things I color have um, been pink and purple. and I'm just picking out several of my... Um, my the my pencils I'm using the Prisma pencil color pencil but you can use any color pencil so I'm just looking for my pink there's a, a pink I think that one will work but I also want I also want a yellow because or even a goldenrod that will be pretty that will add to it because so these are the colors that I'm going to use today these you can pick any colors you want. Um, but I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to just add a little pink down here in between. And on, on what I, in the book or on, if you get the printout, you're going to see that the, I had added a little graphite there. But we all want to do a little coloring. I think that is so much fun. But I'm just going to add, and I'm going to do some of them in the goldenrod. There's nothing like having a little yellow in your garden. It's for me. I have to have a little yellow in my garden. So I'm just going to add a little yellow there. And um, then I'm going to add some lavender. The, my pencils kind of need sharpened, but it's okay. I... I'm, I don't mind because I'm going to blend this with some odorless paint thinner because it's easy blending. Somebody asked why do I blend with odorless paint. You can use a blending pencil, but I want it to blend out just a little bit different. I want it to fade out and with the blending pencil it doesn't fade. I, or, um, I want the color to blend out so that the pink is darker here in the center and then gets lighter as I go out. And that's what's going to happen here. And I'm putting it down fairly thick, fairly heavy, and you don't have to be an expert at this because things are going to magically, magically, ma oh! I did not put my little curve lines there and it will make a difference in um, how that looks if I don't and I don't want to add don't want to add ink um, afterwards but you have to let it dry you can add it but you have to let it dry because the odorless paint thinner will smear the ink so we're going to start at this end and work our way um, out because we want um, I don't want that ink to, to to blend or smear so we're just going to so I'm going to use a shading so stump. I've got my odorless paint thinner and I don't have it in one of my little um, paint pots right now but oh I'm gonna put that so you can see what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it in and you can see it come up into the paint and I use um, Mona Lisa odorless paint thinner so I'm going to start over here and I'm just going to start blending oh and I see I had a little graphite on there I picked up a pen I mean a, a shading stump that wasn't perfectly clean so I've got a little um, graphite blending into there but I just want it to be you can see I'm blending that and it stays really dark down in there and very pale as it goes up into my flower 
and I use this side of my shading tool so that I don't force it down. And you can say what I want to do is I want it to blend. So I just kind of scrub it and it blends. And I'm not going to, I'm just going to go ahead and use my pink right on my yellow. We'll see what happens. Oh, I love that one. That goldenrod is beautiful. Let's see what the color is. The color's called Spanish Orange. I'm going to go back and add more of that color into mine. I'm going to skip over and I'm going to do this one. This Spanish Orange, this orange blossom over here. I picked up a little bit more odorless paint thinner. And you can see this is dried enough that it's not um, it's not smearing the ink. But you can see how simple that is. Anyone can, can shade those out. You don't have to be an expert. Oh, I forgot one flower. I'm going to come back in here and, um, and do it this golden raw, this Spanish. And there we have it. Now I'm going to come back and I'm just going to do my purple, even though I have a little bit of that Spanish orange on there, I'm not going to worry about it. You could, if it bothers you, you could get a um, new shading stump, but it doesn't bother me if the, if the flower picks up a little bit of color from um, one of the others I'm blending. I kind of like it. So you can see how you can blend out and add the color. I'm also going to come up here and do my um, um, the truthful. And I think I'm going to do it in this um, Spanish orange color just because it I, I can. I might even blend a couple of colors. We'll see. We'll try the, the tea and just see how it blends. Okay, I, pretty, I put it quite a bit in there and now I'm just going to blend it out and um, I like how that's turning out. It's going to be a fun color. Um, I will um, finish up this color and um, enjoy my... Um, ooh, look, I love how that's picked up a little bit of the Spanish, the, the little Spanish orange along with that purple, like a little purple pansies touched with yellow gold. And you can also come back in here and add a little color into the center. It's, you know, your design. You can do whatever, whatever you like with it. I just really like a little yellow in my garden. And there we have the lesson for today. And it is Columbine. And I hope you enjoyed it. And let's be truthful. That's the saying today. If you tell the truth, you don't have to remember anything. That was from Mark Twain. And that is true. If you always tell the truth, you don't have to remember what you've said. I, I love that saying. Have a great day and don't forget to tangle every day and um, we can get through these hard times. Enjoy. Thanks again and have a great day.